Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm Brendan from Team 6141 OCS Robotics and today I'm going to show you how to uh, instantiate your motors and create the drivetrain as well as use your joystick. So, um, the last video where David went over the overview of WPI Lib, okay, um, as long as you followed his setup, right, everything here should work just fine, okay? So, first what we're going to do is we are going to this is the WPI lib uh, website okay where it contains all kinds of uh, tutorials for uh, coding so first I want to go over what a drivetrain is and which one we use okay so a drivetrain is basically contains the motors the motor controller and the wheels right so um, this is what ours looks like because we use a differential drive robot okay and there are other types like mechanism drive but we don't use those we use differential drive and i'm sure some of you uh know what this looks like have seen this before okay so there are three different types of differential drive in the code so there is tank drive okay arcade drive and curvature drive i'm not going to go over tank or curvature drive because we don't use those we use arcade drive okay which allows us to control forward and back as well as turning okay so it gives us full range of motion so now I'm going to go into the code. Okay, so this is another time skeleton class that uh, just like David created in uh, his video. Okay, so first what I want to do is I want to instantiate my motors. So that just basically means create them. So last year we had two different types of motors on each side of the robot. So we had three uh, spots for motor controllers, right? So one spot on each side was a Victor SP, which is a certain type of motor controller. And then the two other spots on both sides were Victor SPXs, right? So I want to create those in my code. So I'm going to start off private final. Now don't worry about those two keywords. They're just Java keywords. Okay. I'm not going to talk about them right now. And then I have to say the type of motor. So Victor SP. Okay. And then I'm going to name it. So let's say it's the right side. So right uh, motor one is equal to, okay, equal sign, new Victor SP, and then in brackets, I'm going to put zero. So, as you can see, I'm getting an error. Okay, and the reason is because I have been imported the library for Victor SP. So what I need to do is I need to hover over this error and you see where it says quick fix. I'm going to go over here and click on it. I'm going to import Victor SP and it's going to import it up here automatically. Okay, and as you can see, it's fine now. And don't worry about this little yellow line. That just means we haven't used this variable in my code at all, but that's okay. Now I'm going to create the other two motors, right? Now, if you remember, it's private final. And if you remember, these two motors were two were different. So these are Victor SPXs. So to initialize those, I also have to give the type of motor. So I'm going to say WPI underscore Victor SPX. Okay, and then I'm going to say write motor two is equal to new, and then WPI Victor SPX, and there's the device number, and we're going to say one. Okay, so it's the next port. Okay, and each line ends with a semicolon. And then I'm going to create the third one. So private final WPI Victor SPX, write motor three. Write motor three is equal to new WPI Victor SPX and port number two. Okay, so we're just increasing the number. So now I have the right motors done. Okay, so I'm just going to comment this, right motors. Okay, and now I'm going to do the left motors. Okay, so it's the same thing, right? Victor SP. And then we're just going to change the name. Left motor one is equal to new Victor SP. And this time I have to change the port, right? So one zero one two. So the next one's three. Okay. Private. And then I'm going to do it again. Okay. Private final WPI Victor SPX. Left motor two is equal to new uh, WPI Victor SPX. And next port. And then private final. WPI, Victor SPX, left, motor, 
3 is equal to new WPI Victorious PX and 5. Okay, so now we have the left motors. Okay, so now we have all of our motors instantiated, right? So now what I want to do is I want to create something called the speed controller group, which basically allows us to control the speed of the motors on each side, right? So we're going to group the right ones together and group the left ones together, and that's going to allow us to uh, control the speed of all three of them on each side together, right? So basically the way I do that, private, final, speed controller group, okay? And then we're going to name it, so let's name it right... Uh, controller, sorry, right speed group is equal to new, right, speed controller group. And then basically, I want to add all the motor controllers that I'm going to have in the speed controller group. So this is the right side, so I'm going to add all three of the right ones. So we're going to have right motor one, and right motor two, and then one more, right motor three. Okay, and semicolon at the end. So now we have a right speed group. Uh, together. Now we're just going to create the same thing for the left side. Uh, left speed group, so the new speed control the group, and then I'm just going to add the left motors. Okay. And then left order three. Okay. So now we have our speed controller groups together. So now what I want to do is I just want to uh, basically initialize my drive crane, right? So let me just name this speed controller groups. Okay, so now I want to do the drive crane, right? So basically the way I do that is, a, okay, so I say differential drive, okay, which is the type of drive train, and then we're going to name it drive train, oh, sorry, drive train, equal the new differential drive, and then in here I want to put in my two controller groups, right? So these are going to be the motor controllers, right? So right speed group and left speed group, okay? And that's basically how we create the differential drive and the drive tree, okay? Okay, so now that we have all of our motors, our speed controller groups, and our drive train set up, I'm just going to show you guys the basics of the joystick, okay? So we use a joystick to control the movement of the robot. So Luckily, WPI Lib has a class for joystick, right? So basically, the way we do that, let me just comment joystick. So joystick, oops, sorry, joystick, and we can say stick, equal to new joystick. Then we just want to click zero. And what that zero means is just the port number of where the joystick is plugged into the USB on your computer. So basically, if you have it set to port zero, the use the USB with the port number is zero and you put it to a different USB, it's not going to work, right? So you have to use the same USB. Okay, so that's basically just, that's it. That's all we have to do to create the joystick now, right? But let's say, how would I control it in the code? How would I, how would I, when I move the joystick, how would that reflect onto the drivetrain and get it to move? Now, basically, what I would do is I would go down to Teleop Periodic, right? Where I control the robot. Okay, so this is where I'm allowed to control the robot. And if you remember from David, he said that this function updates every, or multiple times every second. So basically the way it works is I'm going to be using our drivetrains class. Okay, so basically I'll go drivetrain.arcadeDrive. Now remember, that's what we use to, um, that's that's the type of driver we use, arcade drive, right? Forward and back and turning. So then we'll have our speed. And our rotation right so our speed is kind of like our our joystick going up and down and our rotations are turning okay on the joystick so basically what we'll say is we want to implement the stick and the stick's position uh, with itself that will reflect onto our drivetrain and get our robot to move so i'll say stick dot get and then and for us we use y okay and then for rotation, we'll say stick dot get and then Z. Okay, so basically what that does is this gets the Y position of our stick, right? And this gets our Z position of the stick. So this handles our turn. This handles our throttle. Okay, and it sends it to the drivetrain and says this is what we have. So the drivetrain, it goes through and it says, okay, now we need to control our speed, our right speed group and our left speed group uh, to reflect what uh, the user wants us to do, right? Turn and go forward. Okay, so basically, the, this is 
the basics of you know getting your robot ready in the code and controlling it with the joystick okay so just to recap we instantiated our motors right so we have right now we use two different types of motors for our robot we have a victor sp and a victor spx okay and we have to assign them each a port number okay and we do the same for both sides so we have right motors and left motors and then we have to put those motors in a, or sorry motor controllers in a speed controller group right so it controls all the motor controllers at once right so then we have a right speed group and a left speed group okay then we need to create our drivetrain and with that we have our differential drive okay which is the type of drivetrain we use and we just pass in our right speed group and our left speed group so that it can tr control all the motor controllers then we just have to initialize our joystick okay that's very simple just creating the joystick and remember this number here corresponds to the usb port on your computer right so if you put it set to usb port 0 and you put it on usb port 1 it's not going to work so you have to use 0 every time or you could just change the number in the code it's up to you and finally we have in our teleop periodic okay where we are allowed to control the robot we just show how we use the joystick and its positions to control the drivetrain and control the motor controllers to move the robot so thank you for watching. David will be out with a new video on solenoids and pneumatics. And yeah, pretty simple stuff. Just creating the motors and the drivetrain.